Hey guys, Andy here. Welcome to what I think is my first uh, PlayStation game review. And uh, actually, PlayStation makes it really easy to kind of record what you're playing and things. You just double press one of the buttons and it starts recording, and then just gotta get it off on a USB stick. Anyway, here we are. So uh, the game is Drive Club Virtual Reality. Now, I've only had virtual reality for a week. Um, I did a bit of research on games to try, really, uh, and Drive Club VR seem to be sort of uh, recommended by quite a few. Um, while I'm talking, obviously you can just see me, I'm sort of flicking through some of the different cars in the game, so you can look at that while I'm talking. A lot of the VR games that I was kind of researching, they almost sounded like, like demos, just to show off what VR can do, and that's not what I wanted. I wanted an actual game, like a game that had a bit to it, a game I could play for a good few hours. You know, there was one where I think they said it was Batman Arkham Asylum, so it's amazing, but it's... I forget exactly how long it is. Maybe it was an hour long or something. Maybe it wasn't even that long. Um, and then you were done. Um, well, okay. I mean, that's entertaining for an hour. But, again, I want an actual game that I can play and keep playing. And it is an actual game, not a demo. But it's in VR. Um, and Drive Club seem to tick those boxes. I mean, as you can see, there's loads of different cars to unlock. This is slightly another thing. I've, I've not been playing it for that long, so I'm, I think at the time of recording I was maybe level 7 or something like that. Um, and a lot of these cars don't get unlocked until you go up to the 30s and... Four, well, yeah, 30s. Um, also, it's a, it's a little weird, as you can see, there's kind of a bit of a fisheye effect, or you can see kind of a black bordering in the corners. Um, I don't really know what I can do about that, to be honest. In fact, to be fair, the whole VR... Um, experience just cannot be relayed into a 2D video for YouTube. Uh, but I'm going to try. I know I've, I have done some VR videos before and people have tended to like them even though you can't really explain. You have to have played it to, to believe it. But uh, anyway, as you can see, so there's loads of great cars and not only can you just look at them and spin them around, but you can. I think only when you've unlocked them you can get inside and you can get <laughs> I, mean, I do find some of the styles of the races and just look amazing. The car. They look amazing, they really do. So I love the detail, I love the selection of cars right off the bat. I think the next point to address is you're going to look an idiot. Don't. You, there's nothing you can do about it. Just accept it and just uh, just enjoy yourself, really. You are, uh, you're also, it's quite kind of isolating in some ways. So I've been playing it by myself. You put the earplugs in, Thomas and Gomez at this point, uh, as you can see on the screen. Um, and your obviously your vision is just what you see on the screen and what you hear is the earplugs and actually God knows what could be going on <laughs> around you so I don't know, you might want to make sure that doors are locked or you're sort of safely secure you know, sit in VR for a couple of hours and come out and realise someone's nicked your TV and actually that's the next point I really like that people with you can watch what you're doing so when I've done VR before on a phone for example you're just trying to explain to people what's going on well in this, the other people can watch what you're doing so that's quite good fun um, if we then move on to actual the actual game at this point, finally, we're looking at the main menu here. Uh, it's where you have all your uh, the different selections. We can do we can drive, we can race. I don't know, I don't understand the clubs bit yet. I've not I won't lie, I've not really delved into the clubs exactly just yet. But I think they're a bit like kind of guilds from an MMO, perhaps or something like that. Um, but here we are in my profile. And you do get to change what your character looks like. At first, I kind of thought, why, why would you, why would you, I'm driving a car. I don't, and you don't even see yourself anyway. But actually, as we'll see a bit later, you can see yourself if you watch the replays. Um, although, as again, we'll see in a moment, you, you kind of, you can get to, well, that's, is that Sansa Stark or what? I could have been Sansa Stark, but no, I'll stick with. Um, so you do get to choose your helmet, but I'm sure when I've watched replays, I've not yet seen me wearing a helmet. Maybe you've got to have open top cars or something. I didn't check. With like a caterer, wasn't it? But it's all again. You just, you don't get the whole VR element, obviously, watching a 2D video. But it's such a such a, a pretty game, basically. I suppose. Um, we're going to the actual settings. Relatively simple. It's broken down into different kind of areas. I'm definitely sticking with automatic, um, and I've got minimum. I think it's minimum. Low, sorry, braking assist. So it does slow me slightly when there's big bends coming up, which. If nothing else, just helps me realise, oh, I should be breaking for this one. Because you don't have any kind of track showing. You don't have any sort of map when you're driving. So you, you don't really know until you get near to them how sharp bends are. 
So I think it's quite handy having the uh, the, the low brake assist on it. It tells you that actually it's going to... You can't be as quick, basically, if you've got some braking assist. So if you actually learn the tracks, definitely you want to you wanna turn it off. I would love to know what it's like playing with like a steering wheel and things. Um, I haven't got one at the moment. I'm, I may invest because it is a good game that I can imagine we would be pretty immense with a proper steering wheel and pedals. Um, at the same time, you kind of want then you want like the proper chair, then you want one that moves around. Oh, I've start throwing money down a pit. But uh, so the setting is generally reasonably simple. So we're moving on at this point to a race. And we're choosing from performance cars. I'm going with this Ferrari and I'm going to stick a custom paint job on it. I think you can unlock more of these as you go, but uh, that nice black and black and red one. It doesn't matter that much unless you're going to watch the replay, I suppose, in some ways. So it gives you some objectives as you go into the race. As you can see there, finish in the top three, finish with a certain time. I missed what the third one was. You'd have to go back and have a look. And we get ourselves in the car. Now, initially, you get to kind of, it's almost like you're adjusting the seat at this point. You see the little, uh, again, you can't help but be looking around the car. It's, it's yeah. You, you, I can't explain it, it just it is amazing. It's like you're sat in this car. The detail is really quite good. So there's like a little, you see the little display that's kind of in the middle of the cockpit? And this Ferrari is fast. We blow past whoever that was in second. And I think this other car, I'm gonna look over there, we go, I think that's the, a Ferrari as well. So, oh, bit of a nudge, bit of a nudge. One thing I did notice, and maybe I'll find some footage for you a bit later on, is that I don't know there's much of a penalty for kind of damaging your car. So there's a few times I've shot into a bend too quick and I've kind of smashed around the outside a little bit. And I've probably gained some time on the cars in front of me. Or sometimes you come into a bend too quick and you just use the other cars as a... I think I call it the... Well, it's the Rob technique, my brother. Uh, use other cars to slow you down into the bend and help push you around the bend. Every now and then you have those challenges pop up, if you saw that. Um, there's a variety of different ones, sometimes it's like an average speed. Sometimes it's, uh, I quite like a kind of uh, stay on the racing line thing, so you get little blue markers appear in the middle of the road. Well, not in the middle of the road, on the racing line. You've got to drive over the actual markers and it, it counts each when you drive over. And this than the other. Again, we might see some of those later on in some of the video. Um, I love that you can see the other cars in your mirrors. So, oh, look, that was a good time. Look, I was just checking to see where, and I can see him just, I think, in that rear view mirror in the top middle. And I'm trying, I'm trying to do proper racing line, but it does sometimes go, like I said, because you don't know where the track's going to go. So, um, you, you, you're caught out a little bit a lot of the time, unless you drive the uh, the same lap a few times and start getting to know it, which you generally, you know, you often do, because you don't always complete the challenge the first time round, and you have to obviously do it a couple more times. Yeah, I'm, actually, I'm actually slowing down and braking, trying to... That was actually quite a nice... Well, it's a bit much tire squealing for, for that. Um, but I mean, it does look... Again, you can't... Until you've experienced it, it's... it's just, it is amazing. Graphically, I think, it is amazing. So it's not... It's not It's not sort of, you know, it's not photorealistic or... Ooh, a little bit of a crash. Um, but just the whole VR effect is, is stunning. Um, I won't lie, I got a bit ill the first time I played the game. I did a street circuit in some Peugeot concept electric car and there were a couple of really sharp hairpin bends that I kind of s slung around um, and it did make me feel sick. And uh, Tom, when he played it yesterday, I think when he came off he was feeling a bit uh, nauseous basically. So bear that one in mind. I think you kind of get used to it the more you play it. Uh, and also, if it's just driving like this and you're not really getting shaken about too much, it's, I seem to be okay. It was if you kind of started bouncing off of things or the rear end started sliding around and, and I guess it was movement that you kind of weren't expecting. Then it seemed to, like this morning I was playing and I was doing fine for about 20 minutes and all of a sudden I just had a few, well, a few seconds of odd movement that all of a sudden made me feel a little bit ill. Um, if you don't understand why, it's basically because uh, your eyes and your brain or your inner ear just don't match up. So. Your eyes and your inner ear are saying, no, your eyes are saying you're driving around this track and your inner ear is saying, no, you're sat stationary and it just confuses your brain and makes you feel sick. So we've moved on to, this is one of the drifting um, challenges and I really wasn't very good at drifting. I need to, I guess I need to look up what the sort of technique is for it because generally I was trying to just hammer the power and give it some full lock and turn into the skin if it happened but 
So they were okay, dip, but and that was like the best drift I did ever, basically. Um, and then when you come out of the drift zone, you're in a speed zone, so then you're getting points for just as quick as you can drive, basically. Um, and that was where I basically scored all the points because I just couldn't drift. I did that a little bit early. I might, I might have been alright on that one <laughs> if I hadn't turned in about like 20 meters too soon. Anyway. So now we're on to a time trial. I think this is in like a little Clio Sport or something, I think. You see there it says Mike Valentine and it gives me his average, which I don't, I don't think I'm getting okay, no, close to in the end. Um, so Mike's somebody I know, he's one of my PlayStation friends. Um, and it's quite cool that, yeah, it matches you up against their their uh, records, their scores. And you can see that's me out in front of me. Uh, the ghost car, so also your best lap is sort of matched against you with the ghost car. So here we're going to be matched against Michael. I've, I've figured out this. It quite annoys me that the graphics right in the way of actually seeing where the pen goes, which is a bit annoying. But I did figure that one out. You just got to keep it full down, try not to get any tire squeal at all. Got on the brakes for this one. Back on the power as she's coming out. Oh, I just clipped the wall. Power a little too early, perhaps. Uh, you can see just in my rear view mirror, there's my ghost car is off behind me. The whole, again, as I just said, I don't, I don't get the drift in, so I didn't really, I didn't really try. Um, I just wanted to get through the bends quick in that instance. And I'm staying ahead of my ghost car. And the target time we're going for, I think, is 1 minute 20 on this. Uh, was, I know I was going for that, I can't actually remember if that was what the <laughs> objective was. But seeing as the previous ones, and you can just see on the screen now there's a green number, so showing that showing that I'm up on my previous one. That's not the best of corners, I've lost a lot of speed. So while I said there's not so much of a penalty for hitting other things, which we're going to see in the short one as well, it certainly does shave uh, speed off you. So in this instance it was not, it was not good. Here we're going to see... Hey! Under the 120 and you see there... Oh, it's under Mike. Mike's well, I actually noticed that when I was playing it. Um, we're coming back to the drifting actually, just to have a look at the replay system, which I really quite like. I do like watching replays of me playing driving games, I don't really know why. But no, I think it's just fun trying to, trying to follow a racing line and... Well, in this instance, just... Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's not racing line, is it? I don't, that was like spectator line, wasn't it? Um, yeah, so the replay, you can you can switch around through different camera views, you can be a passenger. And I love that, obviously, if you lean around the place and you can get different angled views on things. Um, you can rotate through the cameras, so you can be the driver, you can be your more traditional kind of racing camera view. I think you can actually race from that view, but I think you sort of defeat the purpose of VR if you then separate yourself from the, the person, the actual driver of the car. So... This is the one where I went a bit early, as you can see. Yes, I'm useless. I did not score well in the drifting zones at all. I think it's worth pointing out as well at this point, I do like the sounds in the game. All the different engines do have a different sound to them. You get a different sound when you're sat in the vehicle, obviously, than, than when you're behind it. Um, and I think we're going to hear later on as well some just some really nice engine noises. Now we're moving on to, a, so one of the sort of races is actually a championship. You do a couple of races against the same cars you get points for your position and even just that leaf blowing over the top of the car I mean in the 2d environment it means nothing but actually that just kind of look, those things oh, they look amazing they are it's so immersive it really is and I used to work with the Hannah Smith it was quite weird actually at first, at first I thought oh is that actual has it linked me up through like Facebook or something but no, no it's just it's just the name of just the name of the driver in this particular instance. Not a good start for me. Again, when you when you don't know where the track's going, it can be a little sort of can be a little tricky. You do often get caught out like that. You just, it's kind of damage limitation. Not in damage sense of the car, but you've messed the bend up. Just try and get through it as quick as you can. Luckily, I'm in a flaming super fast car at this point. But yeah, again, just ugh, let's let's ignore my poor racing line. Just graphically, it really is impressive. Now this is on the, I don't know if I mentioned, this is on the PS4 Pro. So I guess you can play these on the PS4 from what I understand. But I don't know that it's going to look as amazing um, as this does. And obviously this is recorded in 720p. I've only been able to upload it in 720p because the PlayStation records in 720p. Um, 
but visually inside the VR helmet. This, it does look amazing. And I can understand why people would shell out money for a steering wheel and one of those seats. If you had a seat that moves, it gives you the actual feeling of like hitting the rocks or accelerating and braking. Oh, it'd be amazing. I probably wouldn't come out of the thing. I'd spend all day in it. So I think we get an example here of it being, I don't know, you need some kind of damage, um, I don't know, penalty. Penalty, penalty, right the word? I, I did just feel a bit like, the more I played it, I realised, oh, actually, I can kind of quite smash my way around some of the corners when there's other cars there and, and really quite benefit from it. So that, that would be, ooh, I like that. That would be one of my kind of suggestions for Drive Club 2. Put in some kind of damage system. I think the only other thing really that I thought that I'd really like is actual uh, actual race tracks. So you know, if I could drive this around Silverstone or Brands Hatch or you know the tracks that you see on the TV, I guess then I would really enjoy that. So that was all being done in the tour mode. Now we're just going to the single race mode where you can just choose whatever type. I do prefer the races. I do prefer those other cars on the track to bounce off. Um, you get different locations to race in, and then within those locations. There are different tracks, um, which all look quite. I mean, I picked Scotland, it's a little, actually a little dull looking perhaps compared to some of the other ones, but that is Scotland for you, I suppose. And, uh, and then we're choosing from the cars, in this case, the cars, just the ones that I've unlocked. Uh, you can see all the stats on the right hand side there if you're into that. So there's a V8 look with 431, was it? Uh, basically, quite a lot of brake horsepower. But uh, for this one, in the end, I thought, you know what, let's, let's try to cater it. That's a bit different. Let's whack, a, let's whack a custom paint job on it as well. White and red, kind of whatever you call it. No, Tom, is that a parcel shelf? Are you get excited by that one? So, yeah, I'm looking around just because it's... It is just amazing to me. There's one point, I don't think I've got it in this video, but... I was kind of looking up and over onto the car's bonnet. <laughs> it's just so odd. Catra and Nice and Light, I don't know what that car, why is that car? Someone tell me, that little thing I just passed. So Catra and Nice and Light, I love how, did you see also when I revved the engine, it kind of torque twisted the, the car. And again, I'm using a bit of the, in a Catra I wouldn't generally try bouncing off things. So this is a bit where you score the points for driving over the blue segments. Not easy when you're racing with other cars because they generally want to be on those blue segments as well. Um, I'm making a little bit of a hash of this race. There's that little car again, what is it? Someone tell me what it is. It's kind of weird looking, it's like really thin. I assume it's a one seat. I don't know. I'm not particularly a massive petrol man. I do like cars and I like driving them fast, I suppose. Um, but at the same time, I don't know a lot about cars, so I couldn't say someone else could be saying, yeah, and up there just ahead of us is the uh, BMW. Somebody said, I was like, I'm not even really sure. I don't know. So things are like thin. Um, I couldn't tell you anything about it. Oh, look at that, it's amazing! So, yeah, this is the game. So generally, yeah, I, I just really like the game. It's, it's a, it is a game that I think I could quite easily sit there and spend an hour or two playing. Uh, aside the sort of nausea feeling. So it, it does kick in. So I think it was when I was driving this Caterham that at one point it just sort of, it all of a sudden it kicked in. And I thought, all right, I better, I better come off for a little while and let my summit start. And it, and it can take like an hour or so for your summit to settle back down. So definitely you need to bear that in mind. In fact, some people, well, some will suffer quicker and worse than others, I guess. That's just how it is. And if you're one of those people, unfortunately, then, uh, then I guess this game wouldn't be for you. You probably need to <laughs> move on to something a little more 770, seven, 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 is that right? Like Whoops, I didn't crash there. But for me, if you love driving, if you love uh, VR, then Definitely, you want to be taking a look at uh, Drive Club VR. I'm, I'm really pleased. It's only about, I think it was 16 or 17 pounds on Amazon. I'll try and to put a link down below. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But for now, my name's Andy, and I'll catch you all again soon.